Hey, I'm Justin Landis and welcome to the Landis Look where we take an inside look at the world of real estate through the eyes of some folks who've been doing it for a long time. Today, those are through my eyes and we're back at the whiteboard today. Going over one of the most common questions that I get, how much does it cost to buy a house? So I'm gonna break that down for you today in a couple categories. So all of this today, these are estimates. You want a more exact answer, give us a call, put a message on here, we'll set up a time to talk you through. But let's go through things at a high level. Number one, earnest money. Earnest money is a good faith deposit you make once you go under contract. Under contract means that the buyer and seller have come to an agreement. You made an offer, the seller accepted the offer, we got the signed contract, now you make earnest money. This is held typically uh, by a real estate broker in a trust account. There's lots of rules around earnest money. And it's usually in the 1% of the purchase price range. This is negotiable, but usually in the 1% range. And one of three things can happen to this earnest money. If you buy the house like you plan, this becomes part of your down payment, a later cost. If you don't buy the house and there's a contingency in the contract, a reason that you can terminate the contract without penalty, you'll get that money back. If say the day before you're supposed to buy the house, you get a job offer in Hawaii and you're like, Hawaii sounds a lot better than Atlanta. Don't wanna buy this house. We probably don't have anything in the contract to allow you to terminate the contract and not buy the house. Thus you're in breach of contract and the seller would get this earnest money as damages. So usually in the 1% range, in most cases it becomes part of your down payment and that's paid uh, a couple days after you go under contract on the house. Next up, when you go under contract, you've got this due diligence period typically in the state of Georgia. That's where you gotta figure out everything about the house. So for sure, for most of you, you're gonna do a home inspection. That's usually in like the four or $500 range. And there's a handful of other things you could do or could not do that depends on the house. Um, and those other things range from survey, radon test, air quality testing, lead-based paint testing, um, camera down the sewer pipe through the, old, through the old sewer drain. So lots of different things you could do, but for sure, for most people, it's gonna be at least four or $500. So um, for this, most people, if we, until we get into what you're actually looking for, I tell them, hey, $1,000 budgeted here. If it's less, great, you got more money. If not, don't, don't worry about it. Set, after that, you have closing costs and prepaid. These are paid up front. Right after you go under contract, in the first seven to 10 days usually, you're doing your due diligence. And then these next two things are paid at the day of closing. When someone says closing costs, they're usually lumping the closing costs and the prepaids in together. The difference between that is our closing costs, those are costs you're spending, you're never getting back. So that's like the attorney's fees. You got a couple taxes to the state of Georgia, intangible tax, transfer tax, um, doing title search, paying for an appraisal. Those are one-time fees. You're not getting that money back. But you also have prepaids. So like you typically pay a year of homeowner's insurance up front. Well, that covers the entire year. And usually if you sell the house before the year, you get the rest of that money back. You also may be prepaying part of your mortgage payment. So if you close on the 12th of the month, you're prepaying the rest of the month there. So you're not really losing that money. It's not a cost that you're paying to close the house, but something that you're prepaying. So when you hear someone say, my closing costs are X, most people are lumping these together, closing costs and prepaids. Boy, these can range, I mean, big, big time, depending if you're paying cash, you're getting a loan, what type loan you're getting. But for most folks, I would say these are in the two to 3% range. Often we can get the seller to pay some or all of these closing costs, and then you don't have this cost um, associated with it. You may be paying that by paying a higher price for the house, but you're not paying the actual cash for the closing cost. Finally is the down payment. This is what you're putting down to buy the house. This ranges usually from 3% to 20%. You can definitely put down more, but once you put down 20%, in most cases for owner-occupied loan, you're getting the best pricing and best rates, um, different for investor loans or if it's, it's something special. There are also some zero down programs or zero down programs for physicians. So if there's any physicians out there um, or anyone going to med school listening to this. Um, and there's also some uh, grant payment programs and programs for first time home buyers. Um, once again, those a little bit more specific to you and we'd love to talk you through that. But for most folks, we're looking here 3% to 20%. 
So let's go through an actual example of this. Test my math on this off the top of my head. Say you're buying a $300,000 house. 1% for the earnest money. I went to Georgia Tech, I can do that math. $3,000. You got another thousand for the due diligence. That's also the easy math. Closing costs, two to 3%. So we're looking six to 9,000. Put 8,000 there for that. And then down payment, 3% to 20%. Say you were putting 10% down, that's $30,000. So here, as we add that up, we've got 12,000 and 30,000, that's a total of $42,000. That's quite a bit of money, right? 42,000, that's a good chunk, especially if you're buying your first place. But you know what this could be? What could this be if we were able to get the seller to pay the closing cost? That could be down even, I mean, could be down to zero, but say it's down to 1,000. Say you're putting 3% down, it's down to 9,000. Now we got all that down to 14K. That's a much more manageable number, and that number could come from a gift from a family member um, as well. And so these are the main costs, but let me tell you about one other cost that may come as a surprise, but I see it with almost everyone. These are fun expenses when you buy the house. Most people, when they buy a house, they do things like, I want to get some artwork. I want to get some new furniture. I want to do some landscaping. Things you would not do if you were renting a house. Impossible for me to put a number here for you. But I rarely see someone buy a house and not spend some extra money to make their house that they're buying into their actual home. So this is a breakdown at a high level of the cost of what, a, what you're looking at. To recap on that, you need these numbers up front when you go into contract. You need the closing costs and prepayments when you actually buy the house. You'll need the fun money once you actually close on the house and start to, to move in. And if you want a more concrete breakdown of this, we can definitely help you do that for your own personal situation. Um, send us a message here. Put a note on, uh, put a message on the page. Send me an email at Justin at Justin Landis Group and we'll break this down for you. Hope you guys enjoy this. We'll see you again next week.